By faith, Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to be mistreated with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He considered the reproach of Christ greater of, of greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking to the reward. By faith he left Egypt, not being afraid of the anger of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and sprinkled the blood, so that the destroyer of the brethren would not touch them there in verse 27. By faith he left Egypt, not being afraid of the anger of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is visible. Verses 24 through, through the end of the section connects faith and values. Listen to this, these words. By faith, Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Now listen to this. Choosing rather to mistreat, be mistreated with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. What an amazing statement. There's nothing that would describe the choice this man made other than the values that have captured your heart are literally not the values of this world because Moses had it all. He was now the adopted son of the ruling monarch of the ruling nation of the world. There is not, no greater position. Fabulous wealth, fabulous power, everything at your control. Uh, Egypt had the best educational system, the best political system. Uh, the technology of Egypt was unparalleled. This is the golden ticket. And what's the choice? The choice is not another golden ticket. The choice is choosing to be mistreated, choosing to number yourself with despised slaves. In fact, Pharaoh was so concerned of the growth of the Israelite nation, that's why he wanted to murder all the sons. Because he's saying these slaves are so successful and are populating so quickly, they're going to take over us. Uh, imagine, this is the Moses who, if he had any sense of his own story, knew the genocide that, that he had been saved from. He's choosing to go back to that position. It's really quite amazing. Rather than enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin, I don't think that we talk enough about how pleasurable sin is. Uh, nobody would ever sin if it weren't for the fact that sin is pleasurable. Uh, and, and in fact, I think one of the, one of the things that, that is so important to, to understand is, is right in the core of our struggle of faith is that sin doesn't always seem sinful to us. I mean, if, if, if you're in an act of gluttony and you're having your second piece of uh, seven-layer chocolate mousse cake, you're not, you're not thinking this is horrible and this is dangerous. You're just celebrating the beauty of these flavors on your tongue. And you just think, I don't want this ever to leave my mouth. Uh, do I have to swallow? Uh, or if, if you're a man at the, at, at the mall and you're lusting after a woman, you're not seeing danger. You're seeing something that's exotic and erotic and attractive. Or if you're gossiping on the phone, you're, you're feeling that the the scintillating sort of power of carrying the story. You get to be the teller, the reporter about somebody's life to somebody else. Uh, or if you've cheated on your taxes, you're, you're experiencing already the, the 14 ways you're going to spend that, that extra money. In all of those situations, the danger of sin is it doesn't seem sinful. 
Uh, and what is remarkable is that Moses, for whatever his theology was, understood the sinfulness of sin. And so he didn't say, this is a bad deal because over here I get mistreatment and over here I get pleasure. That was not, that was not the equation for, for Moses. Moses understood the danger of sin, the dangerous pleasure of sin, the destructive pleasure of sin. 